A website is a collection of picture files and text files arranged for display by HTML files. One HTML file for each web page. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and if markup makes you think of editing copy and photos for printing, it should. With a stroke of genius, the inventor of the basic methods of creating and linking web pages designed the process in a way that allows web page elements to display flexibly on any of the several sizes of monitor viewers might be using, and any size window in between. When you go looking for a page on the net, the HTML file tells the web browser to request certain text and picture files and directs the layout of those files on your screen. That's what you will be creating. All of a single website's component files, the HTML files, picture files, and all of the content, like sound and video files, are contained, along with those of many other sites, within a large and powerful computer called a file server, constantly linked to the internet and sending those files out on the net on demand to anyone who requests them. Everyone who has a website pays a hosting service, often but not necessarily the same as your ISB, to host these files on its server. Some space for your personal web page or pages may come free with your ISP's service plan. In that case, your website address will probably look something like this. But that website usually has limitations. Limited file space, limited bandwidth, that is, limited amounts of viewer activity. The more professional choice is to pay separately to have a company host your website on their server. In that case, you'll need to have your own domain name. There are companies that register these names for a fee, making sure that each name is unique and directing traffic to the particular server that hosts your domain. So, you have to do a couple of tasks, each of which would be easier if you did the other first. Find a host and get a domain name. Each task will require information from the other. You may find it easier to find a host first because some hosting companies will help you do the domain registration. In choosing a web hosting plan, there are a million options, some expensive, some quite cheap. I can't guide you in choosing except to say you don't need to spend much but you do need to avoid plans that send pop-up advertising to your viewers or make you put banner ads on your pages in return for free web hosting. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to email someone and have the message returned to me marked user's mailbox full because they're using a free internet access plan or to encounter a site that says this site has exceeded its file transfer limit. Come back another day. You are a professional. Don't waste money, but pay for a service without unprofessional limitations. Some hosts will even have an engine that let you search for unused domain names. You'll probably have to try a lot of names before you get one that's at once memorable, simple, and unused. I promise you, magic.com was taken a long time ago. I was lucky to get goodmagic.com, but MagicJoeBazatz.com is probably just waiting for you. The name will almost certainly end with .com. That is the category used by commercial enterprises. Always use all lowercase letters when use, uh, creating your domain name. Mixing cases confuses some computers and many users. Choose the best name you can get, but avoid clever puns or stupid internet spelling, a significant number of people who are looking for you will not find you otherwise. There is a fee to register a domain name. Prices vary between several registrars. You can pay to own a name for any number of years. Then you'll have to pay to renew it. When registering a domain name, you'll be asked what name servers you'll be using. Without going into unbelievable detail, 
That information will be provided by your web host, along with instructions for connecting your domain name to their hosting computer. By the way, if you become unhappy with your hosting service for any reason, you can move your domain name to another host. The new host will give you instructions on how to do that. Domain names can be used to give yourself a unique permanent email address or a set of them. If you own joebazatz.com, your main email address can be joe at joebazatz.com and you can create unlimited variations and see that they go automatically into different mailboxes. Be sure to change that address with your registrar as soon as you get it set up. Never use a free email address when registering a domain name. If you somehow lose access to the email account you use to register the name, you're likely to forget to update that contact address and losing contact with your domain registrar is just the beginning of multiple problems down the line. and your prospective customer can now see or hear how successful your act is. Despite what anyone tells you, you can build a site yourself. You may not be very knowledgeable right now, and using a powerful web design program does have a steep learning curve. It may enable you to make some wild mistakes. The way some people design their pages, it looks like giving them a website creation program was kind of like giving a loaded gun to a monkey. There are two even bigger problems with hiring someone to design a site for you. A professional web designer has the mindset that if he's a professional, he'd better earn his pay, and by gosh and by golly, he's going to design like there's no tomorrow. You wind up with a complicated affair full of showy design tricks, 
that just get in the way of simple communication. The design you get is also so complex that you're probably going to be tied to the professional for making updates, which you will definitely need from time to time. You want a site simple enough for you to control once it's up and running. Now you're ready to not go out there and get on the web right away. You're ready to plan your website.